Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Indian School of Physics. This is Nitin here and again I have come up with a very interesting concept and very amazing problem. As you can see the name of this problem is wave optics in cylindrical screen with mixed light. So this is the problem of uh, the diagram of this problem and this problem is taken from the book Pathfinder for JE Advanced and Olympiads and it's a very nice problem. So let's uh, go to the statement of uh, this problem lot of things uh, you'll be learning from it so here you can see the statement of uh, this problem is given as two broad monochromatic uh, beams a and b uh, of plane coherent waves of same intensity and wavelength lambda propagating at an angle of uh, theta from each other and uh, they illuminate a cylindrical screen so you can see this is the cylindrical screen direction of propagation of both the beams are perpendicular to the axis of uh, the screen consider a point p on the screen at an angular position of phi from the direction of propagation of beam a as shown in the figure find that distance between adjacent interference fringes on the screen near the point p Assume that the distance between adjacent fringes is much much lesser than the radius of the cylinder. So in this question, uh, around this point P, what type of fringes are forming and uh, you know the distance between consecutive maxima or minima we have to calculate here. So in order to understand this uh, concept involved in this problem, we will be solving another problem of uh, this book itself where same question they are asking and uh, but it is happening on a flat surface both the problems are very very easy normally i take uh, these two problems back to back in the class together uh, these concepts will be discussed so that is what i thought here also i'll be discussing both the problems in a single video so you can uh, see here let's move to the concept part which is uh, another problem of the same book but this is uh, very very important uh, concept I mean completely new because uh, most of the students normally will find it difficult the reason being because we are more habitual of uh, Young's double slit experiment and the related cases so here it is uh, modified and uh, completely different from that however concept remains the same so let's discuss this uh, uh, part here two identical beams A and B of plane coherent wave of the same intensity wavelength lambda fall on a plane screen. So here it is a plane screen and there it is a cylindrical uh, screen. The direction of beam propagation makes angle theta 1 and theta 2 with the normal to the screen and lie in the same plane as shown in the figure. Find distance between adjacent interference fringes on the screen. So we are going to develop our concept for these mixing of light from this particular problem and we are going to extend the same concept to the cylindrical screen also. These are extremely easy problems but students struggle because of lack of clarity of the concepts here. So let's clear those concepts today. So as you can see here the blue light is corresponding to beam A and the pink lines are corresponding to the beam B. So both are making angle of uh, theta 1 here. This is also theta 1 and this angle is theta 2. So this angle is uh, also theta 2. Okay. So here I am giving these lines uh, different names L1, L2, L3 or you can say uh, this is the length overall length of line 1 is L1 overall length of line 2 is L2. Uh, length is L3 here and length is L4 here. So A and B are superimposing at a particular point here and they are generating certain type of interference pattern. For simplicity, I am calling it as it is nth maxima. For simplicity, I am calling it as nth maxima. Then the very next uh, maxima uh, will be n plus 1th maxima. This is, uh, this is how we are going to calculate distance between two interference fringes adjacent fringes so now here i'm calling it as nth uh, maxima so that is nothing but a length of uh, this part and this part basically these two light rays l3 and l4 they are superimposing and their lengths are also i'm taking l1 l2 l3 l4 otherwise so many symbols would have come so now since this is nth maxima and it is forming due to superposition of l1 and l2 lines where length of L1 is L1 and length of L2 is uh, L2 line is L2. 
so i can simply say that this l1 minus l2 must be equal to n lambda all right you guys will be aware of this result part difference corresponding to nth maxima similarly here i can say this path difference between l3 and l4 this is also going to be corresponding to n plus 1 at maxima so definitely we can say this l3 minus l4 is going to be n plus 1 lambda another thing which is given to us is since these lines are making angle of theta 1 theta 2 and we are supposed to find this distance of uh, t which is distance between consecutive maximas at this point here so if i drop a perpendicular from l3 to l1 this is going to give me the gap of l1 l1 and l3 difference between l1 and l3 so i can write l1 minus l3 is equal to t sine theta 1 which i am writing here similarly if i drop perpendicular uh, from this pink line l4 to pink line l2 i am going to get this gap as t sine theta 2 i am going to get this gap as t sine theta 2 okay that is l2 minus l4 now let's go back to the uh, relation here i'll be subtracting these two equations this and this okay so when i rearrange these terms i'll be getting l3 minus l1 and i'll be getting uh, l2 minus l4 so l3 minus uh, l1 plus l2 minus l4 that is going to give me lambda now i can substitute the value of uh, l1 minus l3 and l2 minus l4 when i substitute these values here i am going to get l3 minus l1 as minus t sine theta 1 and similarly l2 minus l4 i'll be getting t sine theta 2 and that should be equal to lambda so from here i can get the value of t that is uh, lambda by sine theta 2 minus sine theta 1 this is the answer of first problem here and uh, this problem is basically you can say we are using for concept clarification where mixing of light is taking place and uh, we have to look for interference pattern i hope it is clear to you this is a very very simple problem very easily you can understand and let's extend this concept for a cylindrical uh, screen in the next part so this is the diagram here similar to previous case again i'm taking uh, four uh, light rays one from beam b and one from beam a so i'm giving these names as line one line two line three line four at the same time i'm assuming length of line one is l1 length of line two is l2 length of third line is l3 and length of fourth line is l4 all right now here you can see l1 and l3 are superimposing and giving a certain type of pattern at point p for simplicity i'll assume at this point p it is nth maxima at this point p it is nth maxima that is my assumption so the very next i will take that will be formed by superposition of l2 and l4 and that is going to be n plus 1th maxima next to it so this gap we have to find on the screen this angle this distance between uh, these two points or consecutive maximas we have to find so here you can say since part difference between l1 and l3 it is corresponding to nth maxima it must be l1 minus l3 must be n lambda similarly i can say l2 minus l4 it is corresponding to n plus 1th maxima so it is going to be equal to uh, n plus 1 times lambda when i subtract these two equations similar to the previous case i'll be getting as l2 minus l1 and l3 minus l4 that is equal to lambda l2 minus l1 together i'm keeping plus l3 minus l4 together i'm keeping and that should be equal to lambda now somehow i have to find using the geometry like we did in previous case uh, i'll be calculating this l2 minus l1 similarly i'll be calculating this l3 minus l4 and i'll be substituting these values here so let's check for calculation of l1 minus l2 as you can see here i have taken a diagram and uh, it's a little difficult to see here okay l2 and l1 difference if i try to find it is actually this gap because still here both l1 and l2 will be having equal length so l2 minus l1 we will calculate from here 
this gap we have to find out all right so i'm going to magnify this so that you can have a better clarity and this magnification uh, i have done here so let's come to this part now when i drop perpendicular on this line okay when i drop perpendicular on this line so this remaining length here you can see this remaining length here this part that is your l2 minus l1 and this is what we are interested in we are going to calculate this length so if i extend this line from the center and it goes like this so this line is here this line is here it goes like this so as you can see if this angle is uh, theta here if this angle is theta this angle also is going to be theta so this angle is theta with us and when i extend this i get this angle as uh, phi so overall this angle becomes theta plus phi overall this angle becomes theta plus phi all right now here i can say if this angle is phi this angle is uh, given here so this angle also this angle also is going to be theta plus phi because it's like uh, these two lines are parallel these two lines are parallel so z kind of thing is uh, coming so this angle and this angle must be same so i'm getting this angle as phi and this is 90 degree angle so it is uh, you can say from here simply this is also going to be theta plus phi so once i know this angle is theta plus phi simply i can say this l2 minus l1 is going to be x sin theta plus phi you can refer this triangle also this length is x this angle has come as theta plus phi and this distance is l2 minus l1 so l2 minus l1 will become x sin theta plus phi that is what i have written here i hope it is uh, clear to you now similarly i am going to calculate uh, the next part l4 minus l3 i have to find out that means part difference between these two so here in this small diagram you can see this l4 minus l3 is actually this length this length is l4 minus l3 because beyond this till infinity they are having equal length so this length is l4 minus l3 i am interested in calculating this part so again i will be magnifying this part here which i have shown here which i have shown here so you can see this angle is uh, theta i am extending that central line and this angle is phi all right this angle is uh, phi here so can i say this angle is going to be phi and uh, this angle is going to be phi so this 90 minus phi and this angle becomes phi all right this angle becomes phi so once i know this angle is phi it's very simple to say that l4 minus l3 is actually x sin theta plus phi that is what i have written here now these values i'm going to substitute in this uh, equation which we derived earlier and that is uh, l2 minus l1 plus l3 minus l4 is equal to lambda so l2 minus l1 value is x sin theta plus phi which we have derived earlier and similarly this l3 minus l4 is also minus x sin phi because we calculated l4 minus l3 so l3 minus l4 is going to be minus x sin phi and that should be equal to lambda and uh, from here we are going to get this gap between adjacent fringes which is x as lambda by sine of theta plus phi minus sin phi this is going to be the answer for this problem if you further simplify it this is the answer given in the book so sin c minus sin d formula you can apply and you can uh, get this result all right so i hope you have enjoyed this problem it's a conceptually very good problem and it is not difficult it's slightly different but uh, definitely not difficult and that makes it uh, a perfect candidate for uh, je advanced type of exam where uh, any one part they can ask maybe this question they can ask or they can ask you the cylindrical screen since je has never asked this chances are uh, maybe sometime in future such type of uh, problems may be introduced in je advanced exam but uh, as you can see uh, this uh, is very very easy and i have tried my best to simplify it for you because normally i have seen majority of the students struggle with this problem and uh, i hope you have enjoyed this uh, video if you have enjoyed it 
please give us a give a thumbs up share this with your uh, other friends students and uh, teachers also and if you haven't subscribed my channel please subscribe it i'll be bringing more such amazing concepts of physics and problems thank you thank you very much